All right, guys, last time I went a little hard and heavy. I apologize thoroughly. I just get excited by this material, and I didn't want it, you to get intimidated by some of the tedium or boredom up front. So, during the last video, I stated the only new concept I introduced had been that raw input function. Not entirely true. We snuck strings in there, which is a huge, expansive topic, and didn't spend any time explaining it. Additionally, we had a comment in there. And we are going to touch the surface of both of those topics in today's video. Let's take a look at strings and comments. All right, so like I told you, strings are a massive, expansive, deep topic with lots going on in Python. We're just going to look at the very basics today. When I say string, I mean a set of characters. We're talking about words, natural language, and perhaps other code, any kind of things. But when you use something made of letters, symbols, that kind of stuff, you're talking about a string. And the way that we most often are going to demonstrate that to the interpreter is these little single quote characters. They're easier on me to type. You don't have to use the shift key. And uh, when you put text between a pair of those, it'll evaluate as a string. So if we go ahead and save our code. And mash F5, we'll see it prints, this is a string, simple as that. So uh, doesn't have to be any particular number of characters. There's not a limit that you're gonna run into in any common set of cases. So A by itself is also a string. All right, and there you have it. Now, good. one thing you noticed here, and I'm gonna end up teaching you something that I didn't intend to, uh, which is that we are currently utterly without syntax highlighting on this particular document, and I'll show you why. When I saved my file, I didn't add an extension on this, so let's change that and get that highlighting back. Let's go to File and Save As within this window, F7, all files down there at the bottom. I wanna make this a Python script, so I'm gonna call it F7 dot, oops, dot py. Let's try that again. Alrighty, and look, it's back. We got color, got our comments in red. We'll get to comments in a minute. Got my command word in orange and my string in green, and we're in good shape. So, there you have it. Something to watch out for uh, when you're using idle. Alright, so this next line is in red, like I mentioned, and that's because it follows that pound sign, or I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to want to call it a hashtag. That's fine too. And what that's indicating is it's something that the interpreter should ignore. It won't run that code. Now, typically, we're going to use comments to give other people reading our programs information about what we're trying to do or what a particular piece of code is up to. Additionally, you can use comments to just keep something from running if you're trying to work with other parts of the program and not have to, to fiddle with that part when you're evaluating and testing things. So anything that follows a pound character like that is not going to be run. That's why we didn't see those other lines print. In general, it's wise and helpful and polite to put comments in your code. So as you move forward and make things other people are going to see and use, use comments. And don't use comments like this. Use descriptive comments. I'll make a video for you about that later. Okay, so let's uncomment this line. Let's go ahead and remove that character from it and see what happens when we run the program now. A, and this is a string too. Okay, so you can use either set of quotation characters. Both of them are on the same key on the keyboard I'm using. I'm sure that's the case for most of you. And the reason that Python lets you do that, or one of the reasons I say, is so that you can use those characters within a string. So let's say we want to use that single quote within this string we're printing. Let's go ahead and add them in there. You'll see that it doesn't separate it or cause an error or anything like that. It just prints them. There they are. And it doesn't print the, uh, the other quotes that go around the string themselves. So there's a third way to d denote a string, and that's to use the triple, uh, double quotes. I don't know how to say that any other way, um, but to use three of this particular character in a row. And that lets you have anything between that set of three and the next set of three and have it evaluated as a string. So if we save and run, we'll see it prints these here, both of them. And I was sloppy. I had four up front, so the fourth one actually printed. Shows you anything goes in here. Additionally, if you want to reformat or do some more particular things, you can add stuff like this, add spaces or add other characters. And when we save and run this, it comes out with those spaces in there. That won't happen in the other strings. As a matter of fact, that should throw us an error. Let's check it out. Okay, we'll save it. And oh, error while scanning string literal. So those, those triple quotes 
Uh, these things right here will allow you to say, whatever I give you, print it and print it exactly like I give it to you. So uh, there aren't going to be a huge variety of cases where you run into wanting to use that, but when you need to display text certain ways, that can be helpful. So that's how you make a string. Obviously, these are very basic. There's a kajillion methods you need to learn, a kajillion quirks you should be aware of, but those are the very basics. So strings and comments, you'll see them every single time you crack open a program like this. Again, this is Ed from my Bring Back. Appreciate you taking the time to learn with us, man. We enjoy it thoroughly. Love your feedback. So follow us, talk to us, get with us. Let us know what you like, what you don't. We'll keep trying to crank these videos out for you.